Discipline provides a sort of an issue as a healer. You see, it's S tier in all forms of coordinated and professional play, especially for the MDI. I got a feeling you'll be seeing quite a lot of it in the coming weeks. But why do players like myself talk about it as a bottom tier pug healer or incredibly hard to play in the pugging environment? How can something that's so S tier that everyone wants on their team be such a struggle? Let's unpack it. My name is Bowser the Healer, and on my quest to get every healer to 3k, all while pugging, I've been spending a lot of quality time on my Discipline Priest. And while I'm absolutely in love with the spec, I have to be real with you, it is one of the hardest to push out of all of the healers this season, and I can talk all about it. So if you like healing content, get subscribed, and if you just like listen to me talk about World of Warcraft, you can also get subscribed. It means a lot to me. In order to understand what makes Discipline sort of a struggle, we need to talk about what makes it so good. Power Infusion is a great place to start. It's a 20% haste buff for 15 seconds that a priest can provide to a friend. They get it, and the friend gets it, which is pretty powerful. But a 20% flat haste buff is essentially a mini bloodlust. So you can imagine some big AoE spec like a survival hunter or, you know, fire mage. You give them a PI and they get to go to town. Grab two or three packs, pull it onto a boss and an MDI pull, and yeah, PI gets a workout. This is used in a lot of competitive comps for this reason. You can just save a lot of time by pulling efficiently and using some big cooldowns. Now, the damage profile on Discipline itself is okay. It's good damage and it's consistent damage, and in big pulls, it can actually do quite a lot. But it's not more than other healers, it's just that other healers have to actually stop doing damage to go heal, while things like Discipline and Mistweaver can continuously do damage while healing. But Discipline's throughput is actually one of its problem points and one of its shining points. On your cooldown windows, it's very bursty and can do a ton of healing. You get atonements on targets with your various heals. This provides bonus healing based on mastery and converts a portion of your damage based on mastery into healing. Everyone with an atonement receives the same amount of healing, so it doesn't matter if you have one, three, or five atonements, each individual atonement target will receive the full benefit. There's no even distribution here. Not to mention, they have essentially damage cooldowns in the form of Mindbender. Mindbender does some pretty big AoE damage, but more importantly enters you into Shadow Covenant, transforming some of your moves into Shadow Form. Your Penance becomes Dark Reprimand, and both Penance and Dark Reprimand can be used as a single target heal or as a big single target damage button, making it effectively either a single target heal or an AoE heal. During Shadow Covenant, not only do you have access to new Shadow moves, and your tier set works a little differently in that your bonus smites will now be hitting for Shadow damage, but you have a bunch of talents that increase Shadow damage, increase Atonement-based healing that's triggered by Shadow damage, and when you put it all together, the Disciplined Priest gets a bunch of Atonements out, enters Shadow Covenant, and slams some very fat penances and dark reprimands into the targets, doing tons of damage and healing up the party. Then you can continue to cast your other spells like Mind Blast in Shadow or Death and Dark Reprimand to extend your Mind Bender, extending your Shadow Covenant. And by doing that, you press Smite to cool down your penance more, and then you use Smite more to get your Mind Bender back off cooldown. Keep slamming dark reprimands and penances until your Mind Bender's back, or you'll stay in Mind Bender if it's like Bloodlust, and you can completely refresh the duration. When you're in these windows, your healing throughput is absolutely incredible. And it doesn't just stop there. Radiance is a move that you have, Power Word Radiance, that heals up to five targets and provides them atonement. It is a shorter atonement. However, it's a pretty good AoE heal. And if everyone already had atonement on them, it's a very big heal. This also gives you Harsh Discipline, which provides two extra bolts to your Penance or Dark Reprimand. Put this all together and you can see why it's pretty incredible. You can do some big single target healing if the tank or somebody needs it. You can do big AoE healing to make it through mechanics and you're reducing your cooldowns by doing your damage rotation. It sounds about as efficient as I make it sound and it's incredibly cool to witness. Also, atonements can be talented to provide a 3% DR, but the DR game on Discipline Priest is crazy. Their external defensives also include Pain Suppression. Pain Suppression is a 40% DR that you get two charges of at three minutes a charge. Now, that is a long charge time, but every time you use a Power Word Shield, you are reducing the cooldown of Pain Suppression, so you can get an easy 30 seconds off per charge without really thinking about it. Now, a 40% DR is either a Shield Wall or almost a Shield Wall from Prot Warrior. That is a very, 
very strong defensive. And because you can just give them out, you can save someone from, say, an etch in Waycrest Manor or in Darkheart Thicket when your tank gets picked up and they have no cooldowns left. Hit them with the pain suppression and they will genuinely be fined through the mechanic. And just in case that wasn't enough, Power Word Barrier is a 20% DR that lasts 10 seconds with a 3 minute cooldown that you just drop on the floor, drop a Power Word Barrier, and then everyone inside it is receiving 20% DR before they use other cooldowns and defensives to keep themselves up. This is really powerful stuff, and you can see how in a coordinated group, you could really min-max the potential of all of these to get away with some unbelievably large pulls or very risky pulls on top of a boss. So what's not to love? Discipline Priest sounds kind of amazing, doesn't it? And I know I made it sound amazing, but it really does have some issues, and this is where the pugging side of it really starts to show. Crowd control is a little tough. You have Dominate Mind, which there's some funny strategies for, and it's great in Incorporeal Week, but you got Psychic Scream, and that's about it. Psychic Scream is a fear that happens around the Priest, too, so you need to run into melee, which isn't necessarily always the easiest thing. And not every target in the game can be feared. Like there's plenty of targets that can be stunned, like the mobs that provide the shield in Atal Dazar. Yeah, you can't fear them. You also can't fear the mobs at the end of Waycrest Manor that are stunning your teammates on the last boss fight. And it's very critical to remember that as a disciplined priest and as a healer in general, crowd control saves lies if there's four bolt spells headed towards, you know, your poor hunter, you can use Psychic Scream to stop that and force them to cast on other targets or put the move on cooldown. However, once you hit Psychic Scream, it's over. If you're on Resto Shaman, you have a ton of buttons to continue to stop attacks until you can maybe get people back up to full health or the tank has crowd control back up and can continue to assist you. And then the real issue, though, lies in throughput. So when you're in those cooldowns and when you can just extend your Mindbender for as long as possible, get Mindbender off cooldown quickly, honestly, Discipline Priest can do anything. And it feels really good whenever you get to loop Mindbender back to back in, say, a PI or Bloodlust window. But when you're outside of that window, your healing's okay at best. It's not the, the greatest thing in the world, but you don't have any emergency cooldowns. PI is generally reserved for DPS and when you're doing DPS things, and Barrier isn't a good emergency cooldown. There is Luminous Barrier, which is a choice node with Power Word Barrier, but it's sort of a worse Mage Shield. Like, you know how Mages have their Mass Barrier? Yeah, it's like a worse version of that on a 3 minute cooldown instead of a 2. It's a really disappointing move. And because Mindbender is sort of your big healing cooldown that allows you to do even more, when you're out of cooldowns, it can be tough. Now, it's possible to heal anything on Discipline Priest if you play your cards right and if your teammates aren't completely terrible at the game, but it comes at a cost of time. So let's say you're ramped up and you're doing a big healing mechanic and everyone's fine. Okay, good. But then somebody takes some damage. Okay, now you got to take a GCD or two to save them. Oh, somebody else took damage. Okay, you know what? Throw a shield on them, call the day, get back to trying to get your cooldowns back. Uh, now the whole party took damage because nobody kicked that volley. Okay, now you need to use a Radiance cast to catch back up, but you need that Radiance cast for the next damage mechanic that's coming up in a few seconds. Okay, well then pre-ramp your atonements, use Power Ward Shield and your Renews to give everyone atonement the slow way. Well, that's four to five GCDs. Now you're behind like seven or eight global cooldowns and you can see how your Mindbender might not be ready. You might not have access to all the moves you need and suddenly you can't heal the next thing that happens. And so you have to think ahead, but you can't really plan around a disaster unless you know exactly the kind of disaster that's about to happen. And furthermore, you probably heard about it in my last video if you watched it, but pugs are sort of the biggest issue here. If they're not using their defensives correctly, if they're not using their self heals correctly, sometimes you just don't have enough throughput to keep people alive. They just expect that every healer in the game can heal them through every mechanic with no problem. And Discipline Priest is one of the first healers that kind of runs out of juice or fuel, if you will, and can't finish the job. And so sometimes you're in a boss fight where people are just a little too squishy, don't know when to hit their defensives, and then are suddenly blaming the healer for something that is quite literally a skill issue on their part. So how do you fix this? Is there a way to make Discipline Priest better at pugging without making it like Omega Giga S tier and become the only healer anyone ever plays? I think so. It's a delicate balance though because it's very easy to break Discipline Priest. I think you could make Luminous Barrier better. That, that's just an easy first step. Some of the talents could also use a rework. Harsh Discipline is 
I don't know, needless, it takes two talent points to fire two more bolts on Penance and Dark Reprimand. And I kind of just wish it was baked into the tree and I could have one or two talent points back so that I could more easily play around. And because I'm so stuck on Twilight Equilibrium and Mindbender, I don't really get to play with the other talents. I can go Ultimate Penitence, which is an amazing healing cooldown, but it's a four minute. And to reduce its cooldown, I need to spend two more talent points to make a meaningful dent in its cooldown timer by casting Penance. And I don't really have two points to play with on this talent tree. And some people will go for a barrier build that uses crits to make small little healing shields. And those are really neat, but it requires you sacrificing damage in another department, something that I'm not comfortable doing in a pug environment, but in a coordinated environment, that would actually be pretty easy to manage. So this is another shortcoming. But I actually think the biggest solution lies in our season two tier set. And maybe after season four, this could become a staple part of Discipline Priest. But it reads that Purge the Wicked, our single target dot, the damage is increased by 25%. Power Word Radiance's healing is increased by 15%. Atonements applied from Radiance last three seconds longer, and your spells have a chance to cause your next Radiance to be instant and cost less mana, and it has two charges for this. Less mana, harder hitting Radiances that increase Atonement duration, would be incredible. Now, I played Discipline Priest a whole lot last season, and honestly, it was pretty easy to pug with. I didn't feel like I was running into as many walls with pugs. I don't know if that's due to the quality of players that we had. Maybe the War Within's brought a lot of players back and the player level has diminished a little bit and people just gotta learn, but this sort of setup would make my life a lot easier. And if this was in the talent tree, if this was one of our capstones, well, I would love to grab this. I would grab this instead of, of Twilight Equilibrium. That would be amazing. The current tier set's really good for damage and for throughput if you just get to cast all day. And that's why it's so good in these coordinated groups. But for pug players, this tier set doesn't do a whole lot. It's fun. It's good, but it doesn't provide the same kind of benefits that I was getting out of the season two one that simply made this spec a lot easier to play. So something like that, I think would be a good change. I ultimately really enjoyed the changes they made to disc. Making the spec more approachable and easier to play was the right call. But right now, I feel like it's just a little too hard to manage as the key levels start really cranking in difficulty. I want to hear what all of you have to say, of course, if you want to challenge me on this, if you want to provide your own insights on Discipline Priest or how it's been working out for you, I'd love to hear all of it. Let's keep it nice down there. But that's been it for me. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.